Okay, so in version 1.3.4, we introduced a, a new tool in the Z-Sphere transformation type that is called Arc Mode. So let's check out how this works. So if I just add the Z-Sphere here up, for example, let me just change the size here. I get a Z-Sphere for millimeter units up, so one, two, three, four, right? As expected, as we've seen in the previous video. Now, Arc Mode introduced in this version, what it does is that it creates an arc from one Z-Sphere to the next. So I said go up by four units, and that's four millimeter units. So if I have Arc Mode on, it's going to go up and it's going to create an arc uh, clock, uh, counterclockwise or clockwise, depending on uh, the direction of your coverage. So... 180 or minus 80, 180. Okay, so resolution is how many Z spheres are going to be in there. So if I if I do that, let me just undo this operation. I'll just turn how to zoom off for now. And if I do that, what I get is this. So notice that we have a resolution of three Z spheres, which means one, two, three Z spheres inside our arc and we set a coverage of 180. The way this algorithm works is that it will find the center point from the Z first z-sphere where we were creating it from to the z-sphere where we send it to and it will create an arc from the first z-sphere up to the end position. Now, if the arc, just gonna undo that, if I say 90%, 90 of coverage, 90 degrees of coverage, it's just going to give me 90 degrees of coverage. It's not going to give me 180 up to there. I still get the same resolution. One, two, three Z spheres in the resolution. So if I just undo that and I'll go, so remember 180 just gives me the that in that direction. If I want to change the direction, I can go minus 180, go up, and that will change the direction in which we are doing the arc. I've been pressing up, but you can go into any direction. So if I go like that, I get one, two, three, four units, which is what's meant, what's set here. And it does an arc up to four units distance from the first Z-sphere. If I do, if I want, for example, a 360, I have this multiplier here, and this is gonna multiply the coverage by a number. So if I say two, minus 180 times 2 will give me minus 360. So now if I go up, and I'm just going to increase my resolution so I have some more to work with here. If I go up, I get this. And notice that this didn't close the z-spheres. It just gave me a coverage up to where it could. Remember that when you're adding z-spheres with the script, a z-sphere never goes on top of another z-sphere that is in the same position so it got the script got to this point and it didn't add another one here because it noticed wait a minute there's another one there exactly in the same position where i'm supposed to go so i'm not going to add another z-sphere there so you have depth and depth tells this the script where the last z-sphere created is going to go so for example, if I say a depth of 1, and I keep my 360, so minus 180 times 2 is 360, and I press up, what happens is the last z-sphere has a depth of 1 unit, okay? And the depth goes from minus 16 to minus 16 to 16. So F1 unit depth on the positive. So on the positive, it goes away from you, and on the negative, it comes towards you. So if I say negative, minus 1, and I do that again, notice that it comes towards the camera. And notice that the other ones, it's not just that this one has depth applied to it. The other ones are the in-between values. So this is useful, really useful, if you want to do a loop in a roller coaster, for example, or in a car track, or if you want to do for example, a spring or something like that, something similar to that. And if I use a depth of three here, notice there's three units, one, two, three units depth right there. I can use my multiplier and do more than one loop. So if I do a multiplier of two, that's gonna give me 316 and that's one loop. If I want two loops times four, 
So if I do four and I got a depth of three, I get this result. So now I got two loops. Notice that the resolution didn't change. The resolution is from the first z-sphere to the last z-sphere, and this is my result. So if I just increase my resolution a little bit here and I try to do that again, now I get some more resolution in that. And you can see that you can create like springs and things like that. Now like uh, the other things, this respects symmetry and I have X symmetry and let's turn Z symmetry on as well. So now all four are affected by symmetry and I press arc mode and I leave it at minus 180. You can see that it respects symmetry. For example, now this is the selected Z sphere and if I go on to uh, the other way, that will happen. So if I keep going like that, so you can see that now with the arc mode, you can create a lot of cool stuff. So take advantage of it, have fun with it, and I'll see you in the next video.